on page 23. I'm preparing you, yeah, with the tools, as I said, to solve word problems because the one part you haven't had to deal with a whole lot yet is uh, just me giving you a word problem, no diagram. You have to interpret, you have to like imagine what's happening here. That's going to be the, so once I give you the tools to solve it, the next piece you're going to tackle is how do we even set it up, right? How do we set up our triangles and label it correctly? So intro to cosine law on page 23. Um, I will recall uh, that AAS, ASA, and SSA, these were the three scenarios that the sine law can solve. If you were to sketch these, you end up with a pair, which means you use sine law. And so don't worry so much about the letter combination. Like I just want you to know that if there's a pair, you use sine law. That's all I want you to know. Because once you sketch your triangle, you see it. But there's this, this is the hidden pair right here. This is the one you don't see off right off the bat, right? You have two angles on either side and the side that connects them. So you don't see a pair at first, but then if you remember two angles really gives you three angles and a triangle, right? If you know two, you actually know three. So always remember that. Um, and so the other two cases that you may encounter and cannot be solved using the sine law would be side, side, side. So I'm use a red pen here. only if you want to, right? But all three sides are given. So I give you an uh, acute triangle and I give you an obtuse triangle. So all three sides are given. Or SAS, right? S-A-S. Here the letter combination, pay attention to it. You have like two sides and the angle in between. So if you focus on this triangle here, I could say, hey, you have that angle and both sides that are so the angle is wedged between the two sides that's when you know this is cosine law how else can you know is there any way to get a pair out of this scenario there's absolutely no way to get a pair so that's another way you know this is cosine law watch this one side 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 there's no way to get a pair there you don't know a single angle right so also okay it must be cosine law right so you either remember that these two are cosine law or you just remember if there is no pair, I must use cosine law, right? It's it's just that simple. So let's say over on this triangle, you know this angle here and the two sides that are right, right? That form that angle basically. That's another. So I just give you an acute and obtuse scenario, acute obtuse, but really we're talking about that situation, okay? And in these cases, you do not have a pair, right? You do not have a pair. So you have to use cosine law. And here I'm going to give you the formulas. We're going to start with the formulas. And again, time, if time allows me, I want to prove to you how sine law and cosine law work. Like why, why we know for sure it works. Okay. So, um, the SAS case, right, two sides and the angle sandwiched between. So let's make, let's tell ourselves, the one I'm going to give you is where you know this side, you know this side, and you know that angle right here. And then I'm going to give you the variations of that formula. So this is a little different, okay? So basically, if this is your setup, we're able to solve for this side here. So you start like this, x squared. I use that, a red pen for that one is equal to, we square and add the other two sides, like so. Minus, almost looks like Pythagorean theorem, right? But it will not, just watch. Minus two times the first side you're, you, you've used, which is C, times the second side here, the Y, times cosine 
of watch this, I use capital X here like that. So if, if I see you using this formula and this angle here, right, which would have been whatever is, whatever number you have in there shows up here, I know immediately that you're finding the side across from it, which is in this case X. Okay. So I'm going to box that in. I'm going to say this is, this is your formula right here for cosine law involving a side 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 sorry a side angle side situation and now i'm going to give you the variations because i don't want you to fixate on on x or y or whatever so let's say for for a moment you knew this angle here and these two sides right so you had the sas forming on this scenario here in that case you would want to solve for c squared And I want you to notice a pattern. So we're solving for a side C, right? That means that X and Y are remaining. So that we just take them in any order. In the order you choose, you just have to square and add them. And then you have to remember minus 2 times X, right? The first side I put down times the second side I put down times cosine, remember we're in cosine law, don't be putting a sine in there, it's, that happens sometimes, of what side, I'm solving for side C, so this would be angle C, that's the pattern, but I don't want you to have them all on your study sheet because it gets confusing, just stick with that one and you should be able to transfer that to any scenario, okay, when you see the pattern. Uh, so what, what else? Let's say we have these two sides up here, side, side, and that angle there, angle Y. That means I could solve for side Y, in which case you would just write it like this. Y squared is equal to, what are the two sides I'm not, like I'm given, which would be C and X, right? C squared plus X squared minus 2 times C times X times cosine of angle y so these are variations of this formula i would not i would suggest don't have all three on your study sheet because you're going to be like what are there three different formulas no it's the same formula just i'm applying it to the other scenarios all right so you use this one when it's an sas scenario i would put down sas like at least somewhere on your study sheet, right? This is SAS, that's when I use that one. And now it's the side, 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 which just so you know, I'm gonna use this formula, but just rewrite it so that it's easier to solve for the angle. Because the only thing you can do when it's a side, side, side scenario, let's go over to the next page here. The only thing left to do if you know all three sides is to start solving for angles, right? That's the only thing that is left to do. So um, this is how you do it. So obviously all three sides are given. So let's put a check mark on all three sides. Then, 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 right? You know them all. I, I always tell students, and I, I will tell you more later, if you have a side, 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 and I don't tell you exactly which one to solve for, solve for the largest angle first, all right? So which one is the largest angle in this scenario? C, right? It's vision, like I, I made it obvious, right? So I'm going to go cosine. Remember, you're trying to solve for an angle. So cosine of angle C is equal to and now you're gonna make a long line like this. And if we need to, we'll extend it, but that's about right. And I tell my students, because I want you to notice the pattern, there's gonna be a plus and a minus here. For sure. And the first, so there's gonna be a number here, a number here, and a number there. 
The first one I want you to write down is the side across the angle you're trying to find. So here you would have lowercase c squared. And then the other two are the obviously the other two sides here. So you would use x squared plus y squared like that. And then down here is 2 times the first side times the second side. Notice that this side across the angle you're trying to solve does not show up anywhere else. It only shows up once here. I can tell right away if you, did, if you got it right. I just look at this side right here. So let's say we're doing any problem and I want you to solve for that particular angle. I will look at this number right away. And if you, if you, if you don't have the right number in there, I know you solve for the wrong angle. So you got to watch out for that. So this, this would be the formula for a side, side, side scenario, right? Where you're trying to, all, all that is left to do is solve for angles, start solving for angles. You're going to need to use the inverse at one point, right? Uh, I will make a note here. This is just later when, when you study. You need to use cos inverse at the end. Okay, this is very important. Students forget that, but you should remember when it's angle time, you need to use the inverse, either sine inverse, cosine inverse. And this is where sine law and cosine law are very different. Okay, listen carefully. Sine law, you set it up the exact same way every single time, right? You do fraction equals fraction, and then you just go from there. Cosine law, not so much. You need to, you need to know what's happening. Is it a side, side, side? I need to use this formula. Is it side, angle, side? I need to use this formula. This formula really, I just rewritten this formula to make it look like this, just so you know. I'm rewriting, I did a bunch of algebra and just got it to this point, right? So it's not really a new formula, it's just rewritten. So let's say we wanted to solve for angle x here. You would go cosine of angle x is equal to, and please do this, it will save you a lot of grief. You go line, you go plus minus, which, which one are you going to put down first? The side across this angle, which in this case we just call it x, and we'll square it. And what is left, right? You've used this one, which means you're solving for that angle. So C and Y are left. So you go C squared, Y is squared, and then underneath it's 2 times C times Y. Bingo. And one more. If you wanted to solve for angle Y, you need to set it up like this. Plus minus. You're trying to solve for angle Y. So Y squared will come here. I haven't used C and X, right? C and X squared, and then it's two times C times X, bingo. Right? So those are the variations of the formula I just gave you. We're gonna apply it in just a bit. But one more thing, cosine is special in another way, and you'll see that later. Let, focus on this part right here. I'm just, there's so much stuff you need to know, right? A negative numerator, a negative numerator will tell you that the angle is obtuse. If you crunch these numbers, if you crunch, like especially the numerator, if you plug in the values and you hit equals on your calculator, you get a negative your angle will be obtuse. It will be greater than 90, guaranteed. If it's positive, it'll be less than 90. So I will make another note right here. That's why I left blank. 
So let's see, let's have our straight angle. And so if it's positive, you get an acute angle. On this side here, it, if it's negative, it'll give you this angle right here. And I will say this, cosine distinguishes between acute and obtuse. Sine law doesn't. That's why sine is, is a bit of a, a pain in some instances. But you do not have to worry about that right now. I will introduce that to you later. I think now we're ready to use this, uh, use the formulas I just gave you. So for tomorrow, guaranteed, make sure those formulas are on your study sheet. Okay. Uh, I would color code them if I were you, just like I did. It just stands out. Okay. All right, let's keep going. So let's go to page 25 here, and let's put it to the test. Remember, you can only use a law at the very beginning. You cannot use both either one you have to start so side ang angle side examples where the first uh, question is solve for side p solve for side p you should recognize okay i know this side i know that side and i know the angle in between this is sas cosine Cosine law, SAS, right? It's not just any cosine law. It's actually SAS, which means you have to go to your SAS section on your study sheet, right? That formula. And let's see how we do this. So if we want to solve, if we want to solve for the side, you would start like this. P squared is equal to, so you're trying to solve for that side. So you would go, what is this? R, side, R squared plus q squared, side q squared, right? Those two sides, minus two times r times q times cosine of p. And I'm gonna use, I do not require you to write out the formula like that every time with letters. You can just go right in and plug in, but I want you to show me what, how you're plugging uh, values in. So here we go. P squared is going to be 5 squared plus 8 squared. I didn't use any decimals here, but you can expect that. Minus 2 times R. So they're not squared when they're at this point here. Times 8 times cosine of 70 degrees. And thanks to our awesome calculators we can just do the following watch because it's p squared if i just want p i want to square root whatever the other side gives me so we're going to grab our calculators and type that in but you got to be careful i think uh i think they're very there's very little uh, room for mistakes, but we go 5x2 plus 8x2 minus, right, the subtract, 2 times 5 times 8 times cosine of 70. Close the bracket. So I enter it exactly the way I see it. Make sure yours is set to degrees. I think it should be by now because otherwise you would have already um, probably contacted me. So all of this gives you 61.638 and you just go dot 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 right because we want to use all of those don't forget to root we just figured out what this is so now we know what's inside the root so we're going to go second x2 right to call the root square root in this case copy paste right paste that into your root and there you have it 7.85 
and we are in centimeters. There we go. So the formula looks scary, but it is actually not that bad. You can do it in as little as three lines. Okay? Because this one is optional. You just three lines, boom, you're done. Okay? So we have that. Do we have a pair now? Do we have a pair? Yeah. We know this side and we, we could switch over to sine law now if you wanted to continue solving. Uh, the only thing I'm going to tell you is you might be off by 0 0.01. Your answer will be off slightly, but I will not deduct any marks. Just make sure you show me your work and you're fine. Okay, so let's keep going. Uh, solve for angle R. I'm going to box this in just to see, uh, tell my audience like this is all together here. And um, this is A, right? This is A that I answered there. So B, solve for angle R and angle Q. Watch what I'm going to do here. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to continue with cosine law. We, we know all three sides. Would you agree with me on that? <clears throat> you now know all three sides. That's side, side, side. <clears throat> we can use cosine law. We can use cosine law if we wanted to. So why don't we grab uh, grab a pen or something? <clears throat> Maybe I'll I'll just sketch it one more time. Okay? I know you you might not appreciate this as much as as I do, but I will make a, a quick sketch and just write down five, eight, seven point eight five, which I just found, and it's asking for angle R. And where is R again? It's right here. This is R. Let's focus on R there. So that means that if I wanted to solve for that, and it's side, 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 right? Check, check, check. So we would start our formula like this. Cosine of angle R is equal to, make the long line here. going to be plus minus you know what um, because you're still new to this I don't want to rush so I'm going to actually put the letters here P Q R like that which means this is side R side P and this is side Q okay let's do that so we're not wondering like what what happened there where did you get the letters from so here it is. I would go uh, R squared comes here. I will use red. Okay. You would make sure that side comes here. This side would go there. And then go Q, uh, P and Q. It doesn't matter what order you do them and just add them and square them. Sorry, square them, then add them. And it's 2 times P times Q. So now just follow me. Now it's just plugging in. Cosine of R plus minus. Guess which one I'm going to do first? This one here. R is 5, right? So 5 squared. And then it's P squared Q squared. So it's 7.85 squared and 8 squared. And underneath it's 2 times the first side times the second side. And I, I normally don't like trains, but it's okay. It's actually accurate to say that. We're going to clean this up a little bit. We will just get a number for the numerator and a number for the denominator. So grab your calculators. I'm gonna clear my screen here. So 7.85 squared plus 8 squared minus 5 squared. Hit enter and write down the entire thing. I want you to use all decimals. 
and then do the same thing with the denominator, 2 times 7.85 times 8. So that's 125.6. I'll just say this. If the denominator is not bigger than the numerator, you're in trouble. Like it, you're going to get a math error down the road. When you divide this, you should get zero point something. Okay. So let's go ahead and divide these two. Okay. So I'm going to divide. I'm going to go top divided by the bottom here. That gives me 0 0.801 and so forth. It's positive, right? You see that that value, like my numerator was positive. So our angle will be acute. Just making an observation. So I, I set this up. I cleaned it up. I got this and this. And then I cleaned it up even more by dividing them into that decimal. And every teacher does it differently, right? And here's the kicker. Now that you just want angle R, just like before, you use the inverse. Right? So in this case, it's cosine inverse of 0 0.801 dot, dot, dot. Some of my keys, when you look at it, I will not have that many equal signs. Like I might have more lines going this way, but it's it's the same thing. Okay, so we go a uh, second cos right cosine, copy paste, and here is our angle, thirty six point seven six degrees. I think I'm going to highlight that part so that it sticks out. Could you have used sine law? Absolutely, but today I want to focus on cosine, right? Today I want to focus on cosine. You could have used sine law because you had a pair. It would have worked just fine. Okay. And uh, what is what is left? Uh, angle Q. We have uh, two angles now. So we're going to go 180 minus 70 minus 3676. Angle Q is 73. I have 73.25, cannot be, right? There's 76, it's 2.4. So this is another. So now you solved for both missing angles and the one missing side. Okay. Uh, what else is it asking? Oh, calculate the height of the triangle. Do you have that on yours? Because I added that. Okay, let's do that quick. Um, I left this this chunk here. Right, we have this space here. Height. The height will be. You choose. You want to go this because we know this is seven point eight five, and we know R is thirty six seventy six. But I'm going to use what I have just in case. So I'm going to go five times sine of seventy. And that gives me 4.7, 4 4.70 centimeters. Don't want you to forget how to do that. I'm just going to check if the other one works out, okay? I uh, 7.85 times R is 36.76, so times sine of 36.76. Yeah, if you round that, you would get 4.70 as well. Okay, so it, it works out. Okay, I did a lot of talking. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, ask you to go over to this side. And I want you to do the same thing. But I want you to stick with cosine law. I don't want you to transfer over to sine law at any point today. So it says solve the triangle. Solve everything, right? So... You first have to identify which formula do I start with? Is this SAS? Is this SSS? What do I? What can I do? And then just uh, continue uh, from there. I will give you the answers on this paper, so you know. So if you want to write this down, uh, 
side C ends up being 32.22 inches. Angle X is 5384 degrees. <clears throat> and angle Y gives you 23.16 degrees. That way, you know you're on the right track, right? And um, <clears throat> I'll just let you do that for now, and then I'll give you some uh, questions for homework yet. But let's do this first. And, and I, will, I will keep walking around. I didn't, I didn't finish doing a full, full round. But uh, start now so you don't have to worry about it later. I'd say 27 or 28 for sure. And you need to start practicing both laws. So it's mixed up, right? So that's page, there's page 31 to 33 if you just pick some random ones. The key is on page 34. That's another chunk where I start mixing them up. Um, they don't round to two decimals. The uh, key just rounds, I think, to the nearest whole number, but at least you know you're on the right track, right? 